is up guys how's the morning going it is a smash works time you know what i was walking over here by the music and i just gotta i gotta throw one of these out because i just had to try them on they were bugging me so i thought i'd throw these on and just see what do you think i could rock these matt and Lindsay, killer owners of this gym crossway brentwood and uh I don't know if these are Matt's or Lindsay's, but I might wear them for the entire video just to freak you guys out. So, hey, listen, we're talking about being able to get into the bottom of the squat. Now, the problem is, is the hips have to externally rotate, the knees have to fold out for you to allow the torso to drop down into, the, into between, the, um, between the hips, right? So everything has to drop down and peel apart, which means that joint capsule needs to wind up, but it needs to allow that head of the, of the uh, femur to roll, slide, and glide so it can turn out. If you're having a hard time getting into the bottom of the squat and your squat looks like this, well, there's a problem because you're doing two things. One, you're leading with the low back, you're standing up like a stripper, don't do that. And number two is since you're hinging at that low back, you're putting a lot of shear on that L5-S1 disc without getting really fancy. Remember this, compressive loads on the spine, super easy. Your spine can take that all day long. Shear loads on the spine, shear loads on any joint, all bad. Okay, that's like a 10 out of 10 for damage. So don't do that. It's really hard to see with these things, but hey, they are pretty badass glasses. Um, so maybe look like kind of a fly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to open up the hips. We're gonna do three things. Now, there's a missing part of this, a missing piece of this puzzle. And what happens is a lot of people forget about it, but you need that thoracic extension to stay nice and high in that squat. And the dilemma is, if you look at me from the side, we get into a squat and we tend to round out and we do all our extension at that lumbar spine and we're missing that tight component of bringing our um, thoracic spine into a little bit of extension and then tightening it up while we have that bar on our back or in the front rack, which is even worse because when we're in that front rack, we need to be really tall and, and tight because what happens otherwise is you collapse, you spit the bar out or it puts a lot of load on the wrists and then you guys are calling me for a lot of wrist issues. So I don't mind fixing the wrist issues, but how about we just uh, cut that off before it happens, right? Yeah. So I'm gonna, we're gonna show you to peel apart the hips. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to open up that thoracic spine. There's a ligament that runs down the front called the anterior longitudinal ligament. I know, blah, 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 blah. What this does is it drags that thoracic spine down and closed. You gotta remember those uh, thoracic vertebra, they're kind of wedge shaped. So they look a little bit like uh, Danny DeVito, right? Short, fat, not good for too much. So they're very wedge shaped. If he sees that, I'm so sorry, but it's the truth. Hey, you're funny, but you're chubby. So that's we need to open that up. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is show you how to get that femur to sit in the back of the socket. Remember, the socket is designed where the most stable portion is in the back of that acetabulum, not in the front. We tend to ride around on the front, we get that hip pinch in the front. Like my buddy Kyle, uh, yesterday or the day before, he's getting a pinch in the front because the TFL is firing and it's muting up that pelvis. It's putting a shear on the knee, it's flexing the hip, and it's closing up and it's pinching the front of that joint capsule in that, uh, gleno, um, that glenohumeral, um, or that gleno, gleno humeral. Yeah, the, the uh, glenofemoral or acetabular femoral. There we go. See, it's early. I just worked out. The uh, femoral acetabular joint. So what it's doing is it's pinching up that piece of leather in there. It's starting to get all adhesed and covered in, uh, in scar tissue. It doesn't move very well. So we need to open that up. So the first one is you're just going to get a rig. This is going to suck. It's going to hurt real bad. But trust me, it's friggin' awesome. Don't you love these mad camera skills? All you're going to do, you can see. Check it out, it's right over there. We're gonna grab a band. You're gonna step in the band, just like this. By the way, if it's not a pink foam roller, it's no good, just telling you that right now. So right now, the band is loaded up maybe about 20, 30 pounds. You're gonna get into a frog stretch. Make sure the feet are turned out as far as they can. This is already abysmal. The trick to this is you're gonna basically get yourself in this position you're gonna push your chest out a little bit, get down in your elbows, let the band drag you backwards. You're gonna hang out here for how long? Two minutes. Oh, this is so horrible. Now when you come out of this stretch, push out away from it and then close up the hips. That's gonna help open up that hip capsule. That's number one. Number two is, see, I didn't get out of the band on purpose. It wasn't a flub, it's on purpose. So you're gonna take the band, you're gonna sink it into that inguinal crease. Okay, watch out for the twig and giggle berries. You're gonna take your leg, so you're gonna basically do a modified pigeon and you're just gonna hang out like this with a band dragging the femur into the back of that acetabulum. It's gonna push it into that or suck it into the back of that socket making it nice and stable and at the same time, 
it's gonna reclaim a lot of that external rotation that you're missing when those knees cave in when you're in that front squat position. So just hang out like this, band dragging the uh, femur back. How long do we say it like this? Yeah, it's two minutes. You guys should know this already. I get a lot of you guys sending me messages about how it's a love-hate with my two-minute rule. Last one, pink roll. We're gonna move the camera. This is so fun, isn't it? Good, how about that? Can we see it? Yeah, we can. It's hot in here today. We're gonna grab this. You're gonna loop into the band like this. You're gonna get the foam roller just at the base of the scapula. That's really important. You're gonna put both hands in through here. So now I've got this dragging me up and over. I'm fighting it right now. We're gonna let it pull you all the way over and you're just gonna let yourself fulcrum over this foam roller. Now you can see I got this a little bit slack so we can pull it tight. And you're just gonna hang out legs for how long? Two minutes. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna open up that thoracic spine. That one's gonna hit a lot of other things too. So cool part about that is it's gonna hit the teres, the lat, the, uh, the pec major, it's gonna open up a lot of that shoulder capsule. So when we're in that front rack position, it becomes a lot more stable because even the shoulder, now I can say um, glenohumeral joint, right? See, before it was acetabular femoral joint. So now we can get that all sitting really proper, moving the way it's supposed to. Get into the bottom of the squat, I guarantee you, test, retest, see how it feels when you're done doing this stuff. It takes like five minutes. Get that all done, get your squat solid, start picking up huge weights. Hey, I'm Trev, Smashworks. I see you guys tomorrow.